Ryan in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Ryan. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you doing this morning? I'm well. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Hey, I have a question. Um, so I'm just wondering, how do you know if a computer is being hacked? Ah. And also, and also, how do you know that if your Wi-Fi um, network, you know, is also hacked? And what? And if it is, what do I do? Well, you must suspect something, right? Yes. Because you wouldn't ask that question. So, what are the symptoms you're seeing? Um, I don't know. It's just that, like, you know, I feel like there's some intrusion going on. Yeah. So, a, one of the things that all this conversation about hacking, and there's a lot of it going on right now, can do is make us paranoid to the point where we see things. So, you, it's, you ask actually a very good question. How would you know? And there isn't really a great answer. There certainly are programs you can run, uh, you know, at the very least antivirus programs that would at least scan your computer. If you have a Windows computer, Microsoft actually puts something called the uh, uh, Windows Defender and the malicious software removal tool on your system. All Windows 10 systems have it. Those both have scanners that you can run uh, that look for well-known infections. Uh, but there are all sorts of ways a bad guy can get on your system, including of late... Uh, and you mentioned it, on your router, your router is a little computer with not very much security built in. Uh, older routers often have major well-known vulnerabilities that bad guys can take advantage of. In many cases, almost all cases with the Internet of Things devices like doorbells, lights, routers, uh, rebooting them sufficient to clear the infection out. The Mirai uh, attack, which is uh, probably the best-known uh, worm that was spreading like wildfire took advantage it was the it was the worm used to ddos the internet <laughs> about a month ago it, it infected routers uh it was hard to detect i'll give you a couple of symptoms to look for but it was easy to fix just rebooting the router the problem is if the router was insecure and as i said some older routers are it would just get infected, almost reinfected almost immediately as the Mirai worm traveled around the Internet. It was just opportunistic. So unusual use of bandwidth would be one. Mm -hmm. uh, ads popping up on the screen that you know don't belong. Mm -hmm. They come from sites that, you know, don't have those ads. They may appear, they may even take over site, site ads and put their own ads there. You know, if you're on a reputable site, and you see a disreputable ad, <laughs> that's that's kind of a warning sign. I don't, but again, I don't want you to be paranoid because, you know, paranoia can cause you to see things that aren't really there, and then, and then people get nervous and they don't use their system. So uh, there are even more sophisticated tools you can use uh, to detect oddball network activity. These require some additional skills, but they're worth looking into. NMAP is one, N-M-A-P. It's a free program you can download. And it looks at open ports and traffic that's abnormal and tells you, hey, you know, there's something contacting the Internet on this machine. And yeah. that's very useful because if you didn't put it there, hmm. So uh, I think learning to use NMAP, if, you're, if you really want to be a security guy, this is a very important tool. Uh, Wireshark is another tool that's often used to um, monitor uh, network traffic. So if you're concerned that you have a device that's phoning home, that's what hackers often do, um, they will, uh, you know, there'll be traffic going across your network that, it, you know, is oddball. Wireshark will actually show you what's what's the conversations are out there, and you can look into them and see. Uh, let's see, what else can you do? Um are you on a Windows or a Mac? Windows. Uh, yeah, on a Mac, there's some really cool little programs. There's one called Little Snitch that will watch outbound traffic and alert you if unapproved outbound traffic is going on. On Windows, there are various firewall products. The problem with these products that just sit on your system and watch is they can be disruptive. Sometimes they can even keep you from getting online. Uh, so I, be, I, I, I used to recommend, you know, something like Zone Alarm, which used to be a really great uh, inbound and outbound firewall. The Windows firewall uh, is only an inbound firewall. You want to see outbound traffic. If, if somebody puts something on your system, it's useless to them unless it connects to the outside world. Often what bad guys will do is they'll put malware on your system that joins uh, an IRC channel, a chat channel, uh, and then forms what they call a botnet. 
I've seen this actually happen. I remember it was some years ago uh, watching a botnet evolve. You'd, uh, you, if you went into this IRC channel, if you knew where it was, you could go there and watch machines that were being uh, attacked, exploited, and taken over sign in. You know, basically saying, you know, machine 6573 here reporting for duty. I'm on the phone. And Yeah, he's on the phone right now. Don't bother mom and dad. And, uh, and, and it was really an eye-opener. Uh, I, I was shown it by law enforcement, and, of course, right they, they were about to shut it down. They just said, you, you're interested in seeing what this looks like. Here's what it looks like. And, mach and other machines were signing in every second, many, many machines. So it was a very busy chat room as these machines signed into the botnet. And what happens is that, you know, the hacker hides this chat room, doesn't, doesn't want anybody to see it, usually running a private server. And, and now the hacker can issue commands to these thousands of commandeered machines, including perhaps yours, and use it to attack other machines. Um, so there's all sorts of you know, sneaky things that can be going on. I like the idea of viewing your traffic. Um, here's some other things. If you go to, Microsoft has a, a website, a, a division called SysInternals. It's actually a company they acquired by from Mark Racinovich. SysInternals has a number of really useful uh, tools for this. Process Explorer is one. You can see what processes, what programs are running on your computer. Uh, they have another one called, uh, Gollum's reminded me, TCP View that will allow you to watch TCP traffic. Um, there's all sorts of really great tools. They're very sophisticated. Um, but you've got sophisticated adversaries. And so there's, you know, my, you know, there's no switch built in to check for check to see what's going on. This is by the way of if you're if you're interested in a career in IT, a very good skill to have uh, to learn how to detect malware and how to remove it. How to protect against it? Uh, there's these these you know these are really good skills nowadays because it's everywhere. But the chief tools people use Nmap, Wireshark are both free open source tools, very powerful. Go to SysInternals, Microsoft SysInternals. Those are all free for Windows. A good firewall will help you. Um, and and it's probably a good idea to be really careful about which Internet of Things devices you choose. It's best. To use ones that are modern and from reputable companies that keep them up to date. And the problem has been a couple of things. First of all, routers are such cheap devices, such commodity devices, that there's not much incentive for the companies to keep an eye on security flaws or to, to ship updates. Also, most routers, you have to do the updating. What you really want is something that will automatically update. And the better, more modern routers, all those new mesh routers we're hearing about, like the Eero and the Luma and the Plume and the Orbi, they all update themselves. Uh, and that's a good thing. Here's a website that's interesting. I don't know if this works, but uh, thank you, Badango Master in the chat room. Who is on my Wi-Fi.com? Is that real? <laughs> I don't know how it would work. Yeah, that's the problem is outside testers don't really have the uh, access. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, this is, uh, I guess, a an app that you can put on your uh, machine. Who is on my Wi-Fi? That'd be useful. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, that's interesting. You're out. Who's on my Wi-Fi? This is a, that's a great subject because, I mean, we, you could go on and on and on on that one. Uh, download a free Who's on My Wi-Fi Windows, Mac, or Android detection agent to your computer. This runs on your network and locally inventories and detects devices. Ah, so this is who's using your Wi-Fi. This is probably not what you need. This is to see if some third party is using your Wi-Fi, which, you know, is of interest. But what it won't show is if some program or process is running on your computer... Because your computer, you already know your computer is connected to the Wi-Fi. It's not going to give you any additional information. What you want to see is, is if there's some process running that's using your Wi-Fi to connect to the outside world. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd recommend who's on your Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's 99 bucks a month? Oh, no, no. And yeah, one, one person we know is on your Wi-Fi now, the guy who wrote that. 